guys welcome back to another vlog happy belated lab week <laughs> if you're new here i'm dominique a medical lab scientist working in microbiology i filmed all last week for lab week and sat down over the weekend to edit and was just so excited because i had such fun last week all of the footage somehow was recorded in slow motion and slow motion doesn't record audio so there was nothing i could do to fix it and I'm not gonna lie, I got discouraged, but I still want to acknowledge Lab Week. And I think overall, 2024 has been such a fun year for me to celebrate laboratory science because I'm in a season of feeling appreciation and positivity for working in healthcare. I'm finding joy in what I do. My lab went all out for decorations this year for ASAP's Barbie theme. And one of the things we did last week was a Barbie Bake Off and a can cook off and i was one of the judges on the panel so that was so fun my favorite dish out of the whole thing was a homemade vanilla sheet cake but it included bananas in the cake and it had like buttercream icing i don't know like it, it doesn't sound good at first but it worked and it was really delicious bd gave my department a luncheon presentation yesterday about accelerate diagnostics where they focus on blood culture testing for identifying pathogenic phenotypes instead of targeting genotypes like other molecular based analyzers. So that was really interesting to hear about other methodologies that are advancing microbiology testing. We also had the hospital service dogs come by to see us. We had a bunch of games, lots of food, prizes. But yeah, happy lab week. <laughs> Hope you had a great celebration of laboratory services. I know I definitely did. I just hate that all the footage is gone, but I got a lot of gifts this year. So I got this tote bag and um, we got a t-shirt and I got this water bottle. And I also got like a big travel mug that says laboratory with my one of my hospital's um, logos on it. And then I got a hoodie that also says laboratory services with just overall, it was a good lab week. And I had fun. Um, in the last vlog, I shared that I had started my new job in microbiology at a children's hospital. So my patient population for lab testing is newborn to 17 years old. And I don't know, like it's such a different environment compared to acute care hospitals, for example. There's a really nice garden area in the hospital and I was eating lunch outside and I witnessed the baby like go outdoors for the first time. She looked to be about three to four months old, but this was her first time outside the hospital walls and they took her around the garden in a little wagon as they videotaped her. But literally like she saw sunlight for the first time. She heard the sounds of the trees and animals. I was just so happy. <laughs> and it made me more appreciative to have a chance to work in pediatrics. And it also made me realize that the work environment is a lot better than what I've experienced. Just the people around me seem to be more happy to be at work, more prideful in the work that they do, and just overall more content. Even in my microbiology department, like people have been pretty positive. Um, and they were so welcoming and really made an effort to help me adjust here and fit in with the team. And y'all can go back and watch my old videos because this was the complete opposite of my previous facilities. Of course, there's always going to be a pro and a con to any job. Um, I think the only con for me <laughs> is that they use SunQuest <laughs> and Smart Term. I just feel like I'm going to be so happy when I can finally say goodbye to SunQuest. Like, it's not that bad once you get used to it, but for plate reading, SunQuest is so manual when it comes to documentation and just having a taste of better makes me miss Epic <laughs> because I found my workups to be pretty easy with the decision tree. But in SunQuest itself, like um, it's been a learning curve for me just because there's all these extra things I need to document that's not built into the system. And then it's really weird with how the analyzers are interfaced. Like <laughs> it's just a lot of extra steps that I didn't have to do working with Epic. I completely signed off for like setups and molecular testing, stool cultures and urine cultures, but I asked for a week, another week to just kind of like get used to documentation before I move on to more plate reading benches because um, I don't want to like, 
get caught up with forgetting things that I need to document or not knowing I need to do this. So if I get another week, that gives me more time to like acclimate <laughs> to documenting in SunQuest. So a week from now, I'll start training for blood cultures. Um, Happy Wednesday. It's the first of the month. <laughs> and I'm feeling good today. I got some new shoes over the weekend and I've been giving them like a little test run and they're doing the dang thing. They are really working. I got, I got these. And um, at first, like the last three years, I was just like, you know, it's just these hard hospital floors hurting my feet, but it's gonna be like this forever. But I finally like invested in a decent pair of shoes. Magically, the foot pain is gone. So sometimes it's not the hospital floor. Sometimes it's just your shoes. <laughs> or at least it was mine. But um, I hope y'all had a good day today. I attended Grand Rounds. Let me backtrack. We actually do rounds in a laboratory. And for my department, it's um, us in microbiology and the infectious disease doctors, which is like the fellows and residents can attend and pharmacy can attend. Basically anybody can attend if they want to, but like it's for us and infectious disease specialty doctors. And um, it's where my microbiology lab director, he kind of just gives a topic every week. And so anyway, for grand rounds, we were invited to go and the microbiology lab director gave a topic for pharmacy this week, but um, he talked about antibiograms in his lecture. And it was kind of interesting just because I haven't had the experience to make <laughs> like an antibiogram. So that was kind of cool to understand like what the steps are as far as making it and understanding more about the CLSI guidelines that regulate or kind of guide the process to uh, create the antibiograms, so that was interesting. And then he talked about like um, resistant mechanisms for why certain drugs are not reported in an antibiogram. Like you'll see like a black or a grayed out box for a drug and it's usually that it's intrinsic resistant um, or it's just a drug that we don't normally report for that organism. And so anyway, some of the mechanisms that he talked about was like staphylococcus having mech A gene and that would allow it to produce the PBP to a protein, which will then make it methicillin resistant. And then he talked about Enterobacteriaceae, how some of them are carbapenem resistant. And he talked about like a few of the ways that they can be resistant to that. Having a pump channels, having porins, having um, genes that will create carbapenemase and stuff like that. So that was interesting. Intriguing for me. Um, I feel like everybody in the lab in micro has that genus or species that um, Fascinates them or is their favorite or whatever and for me mine is Acinetobacter. I don't know what it is about it, but it's always just so destructive <laughs> in the in the cases that I see it in and At my previous hospital it, it was like almost every time I isolated it, it was MDRO in vitro. It's, it's a very chaotic bacteria <laughs> and I was hoping that he would talk about it because um CDC has it on their website as an urgent alert organism. And it's up there with Canada RS because of its likelihood to be resistant to carbapenems. And so I was like, oh, he's gonna talk about that. And he talks about resistance, but he didn't. And um, it kind of did, it's making me want to go like on a deep dive research about it to learn more. But he talked about like some of the newer drugs that are coming out that like I'm not really familiar with because we don't test them in a laboratory. But the other thing that I noticed is that he talked about this lecture not like in our laboratory language, but like in a different perspective. He talked about it for the provider's perspective because the other people that attended this um, presentation were pharmacists, there were um, doctors, there were PAs, nurse practitioners, and just providers in that sense. And so he talked about it from their perspective as far as treatment and caring for the patient. Whereas we know microbiology from the biology standpoint, like trying to identify this organism and its normal patterns for isolation and stuff like how to grow it and all this stuff in the laboratory. But then their version of it is how can they treat this and how fast can they get answers to treating this? And so he explained that too, as far as like what testing we're actually doing in the laboratory to get them the answers that they want and explaining our methodologies for testing as well. And so it was, it was really cool and um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> so that was my first grand rounds that I've ever attended. And so the cool thing is that like it kind of related to the classes that I was taking this past semester in grad school. One of the classes was infectious disease. 
And so it kind of clicked for me when he was talking about things from a treatment perspective, because that is what my infectious disease class did. And I hated it. I was like, where's the microbiology? <laughs> and they were talking about it, but from a medical standpoint, not from a biological standpoint. And so I found that annoying. I know that they're doing it because there's certain people that want to be providers in the future. They're going to this graduate program to better their chances of getting into like a medical or a professional program to be a provider but that's not me. <laughs> so I'm planning to sit down and like rethink my whole class path, all of my classes. Um, one of the things that I know that my program focuses on is microbiome studies. I'm hoping that I could take more classes about that and more like um, programming type classes, more data analysis type things that will, I think will be beneficial for me to gain more skills in data analysis than it would be for <laughs> treatment and <laughs> like, I just want to learn more about the things that interest me. And in that infectious disease class just didn't do it for me. Like I did not find that interesting at all. It was really boring. And not to say that I didn't learn anything, but it's not things that I need to learn going forward. Like it's not things that are gonna really help me grow in my career or help me at work. But I do think that learning more programming would help me. So like one class I signed up for this summer is microbiological data analysis. And that is a class based in R programming language that I don't know. I know Python and I can do a lot of things in Python, but I don't know any other language. And so um, the R programming class will be doing a lot of data analysis for um, genomic studies. I've been learning a little bit of R this week because I think my class starts next week. <laughs> so I've started to try to learn a little bit of R this week. And I would, today my focus was like, why do I need to learn R? And I can see now after like, learning more about it that it can really help with statistical analysis in the sense that there's a lot of functions and packages already available in the system and that makes playing with your data a lot easier than it does in python because that python code can get really ugly <laughs> when you're trying to make graphs and stuff and i'm oh i'm taking another class it's a journal club in microbiome clinical studies which is something that really interests me <laughs> and i do want to learn more about the microbiome not necessarily that I want to go into research about it. It's just interesting to me. If you want to learn more about it, you can start with this documentary on Netflix that like just released. It's called Hack Your Gut, but it's a microbiologist talking about the benefits of a healthy gut and how it can help alleviate some of the illnesses that we experience as Americans because of our diet and our lifestyle. So that was like eye opening. So if you're interested, please go watch it. Tell me what you think. Yeah, I'm ready to get out of these scripts, but I'll talk to y'all. And I'm sorry if this vlog was just me chatting, if a bunch of my vlogs are just me chatting, but it's really nice to be able to just clear my head <laughs> and have someone to talk to and just clear my head of all the thoughts that I be having. I had one more update. I've been telling y'all like in the last few vlogs that I've been training as an Epic Beaker super user at my PRN job. I'm telling you, I've been waiting for this since 2021 when they told me I could assist. And so we finally went live last month. I had to work night shift on top of working my new work schedule. So I didn't vlog. I'm still playing catch up with sleep. That go live process was top tier. The worst shifts I've ever worked. They gave us t-shirts. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I was looking just like this shirt by the end of the weekend. So basically my role was microbiology department super user. So I assisted the technical supervisor by configuring the molecular analyzers to HL7 so they could communicate to Epic during the downtime. But let me tell you, that downtime lasted six hours. <laughs> that downtime was six hours long. And when I'm telling you it was the entire system, it was us in the laboratory at my hospital. It was the other labs at the other hospitals and it's over. I don't wanna give away where I work, but we were down in the laboratory as well as the floors. They were also down. They couldn't use Epic either because they were trying to go live at the same time. And so it was six hours because it was so many different places doing this process at once and they wanted everyone up at the same time. So um, the downtime was the worst part. But after we went live, I was there to mediate any issues uh, with the Epic Beaker team because they stayed with us that entire weekend. It wasn't too many issues like for micro. It was little things like the barcodes weren't printing right to uh, set up your plates or the blood culture bottle process wasn't working for auto verification. And another thing was that the lab assistants, when they received for molecular testing, they were able to print like four different types of barcodes, but the analyzers in micro only read one. And so it was me and one of the Epic Beaker team members. We were literally like sitting down, like <laughs> trying to narrow down which label would work. 
so that the analyzer could understand that when we scan this barcode, this test is associated with this patient. Because we were having, I was having issues with my results crossing to the chart. They were just kind of held over and not associated with a patient, but the labels were right and everything. So it was interesting, to say the least. Um, then after all those issues were worked through, I also had to retrain the micro text to use the system. So showing them how to receive, how to s set up plates, how to result molecular and rapid testing, how to pack test for send outs, how to result gram stains, how to um, report like the initial positive gram stains, how to call criticals. So when I tell you I was tired, <laughs> it's been a month and I still haven't had time to go back and learn like hematology and chemistry. So I've mainly just been working micro when I go and then I had worked one shift hematology and I was kind of just fumbling around, but I really haven't worked in chemistry since last year. I'm a generalist, so I know what to do for chemistry later. I can be back up for somebody like if they need a break or something, but my main um, scope now there is microbiology and blood bank. I definitely need retraining when it comes to hemanetics. Like I get bits and pieces of what I need to do in the system, but I don't know the whole workflow. I can assist but I don't know the workflow enough for me to run the department on my own like I need to. Um, so I can do like micro and hematology. Um, now I feel comfortable with hematology enough to get through my shift. So we'll see. But the leadership at my now full-time job has told me that they are also planning to undergo building up a beaker. So um, they told me that I can assist with that go live as well. So that will be fun for me because I'm not a generalist at this hospital. I'm only a micro. <laughs> So it'll be fun because now I know what to expect from a system go live. I've seen two different facilities use Epic. I think that this will be fun for me and a chance for me to see like if I'm interested in going towards LIS in the future. More so like systems analyst or, or even um, an application specialist, like just kind of informatics type of work. It doesn't relate to my master's, <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's something that I can really wing into, but from my understanding, LIS is more so things that you learned on the job, and you have an understanding of the workflow, so you learn more. I just would hope that the master's wouldn't like over-qualify me for a job, or question, make them question, like, why am I even trying to get the job? I don't know. Just rambling. But um, I wanted to chat with y'all because I'm really committed to posting two videos a month, for this year and so far I was doing great until this I fumbled this vlog 